I want to take as my text this morning our first reading from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, uh, in particular 1 uh, Samuel chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. Uh, if you're making use of a Bible nearby, I want to encourage you to take it uh, and find 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel is a, in a ways uh, from the beginning of the uh, Old Testament, uh, past Joshua and Judges and Ruth and then 1 Samuel. Uh, and if you see 2 Samuel and 1 Kings, you've gotten just a little bit too far. Uh, but 1 Samuel uh, chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 10. And I'd like to read that again just so it's uh, fresh in our minds. It says, now, and the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, that is Eli the priest. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Indeed, there was no frequent vision. And at that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was laying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And then the Lord called Samuel and he said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, lie down again. And so he went and lay down. And the Lord again called Samuel and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call you my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and he went to Eli and he said, Here I am, for you called me. And then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. And therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And so Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling at, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant hears. The morning, so this morning I want to talk about, uh, about being on deck for God. <laughs> being on deck for God. The expression on deck is, a, is a, an old shipping expression. And indeed, uh, uh, to be uh, on deck, uh, on the deck of the ship, is, as opposed to down in the hull of the, the ship, uh, means to be present and, uh, and available, uh, to be present and available and, and, and ready for action. Or even in baseball, to, to be on deck means that uh, you're out of the dugout and standing somewhere near home plate, ready and available uh, to take your turn at bat. And so what does it mean to be on deck for God? Well, if we're to take our cue from Samuel, I, th I think to be on deck for God means to be uh, present and available, uh, to hear what it is, whatever it is that God wants to say to us, uh, and to be present and available, uh, to do whatever it is that God wants us to do. Indeed, if Samuel is anything, uh, he was uh, on deck for God. Now, the story of Samuel is uh, rather interesting. Uh, in 1 Samuel, we read that uh, Samuel was the son of a man called uh, Elkinah, presumably a Levite, because of what Samuel goes on to do uh, as he's uh, growing up, and, and his wife, Hannah. And so his father and mother were, were Elkinah and Hannah. Uh, but before Samuel was born, uh, Hannah was barren. And as much as uh, Elkinah and Hannah tried, Hannah uh, seemed uh, unable to conceive, uh, which was a source of great pain to her, uh, even a source of shame, uh, given the culture in which she found herself. And in course of time, we're told in 1 Samuel that uh, Hannah vowed a vow. In fact, in, in the very first chapter of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 1 in verse 11, we have the, the text of her, the words of her vow, and, and this is what she prayed. She said, O oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget me, but will give me a son, then I will give him to you all the days of his life. And then we read on in the text that after this, uh, the Lord opened Hannah's womb uh, and, and, and she had sexual relations with her husband, Elkinah. Then Hannah conceived 
And in course of time, she bore a son. Nine months later, she <laughs> bore a son. And she named him Samuel, which means in Hebrew, heard of God, because God had heard her prayer and had given her a son. And then we read on in 1 Samuel that um, when Hannah had weaned Samuel uh, so that he was no longer uh, reliant on his mother's milk, uh, she took him to the house of the Lord, that is the, the tabernacle that was set up in Shiloh in the, in the, in the territory of Ephraim. And having dedicated him to the Lord, she left him there at the tabernacle with Eli the priest. And the text says that uh, young Samuel served before the Lord under the direction of Eli the priest and that Samuel continued growing physically and in favor with God and others. And if you're familiar with the story of Samuel and the books of and the book of first uh, Samuel, uh, you, you know that we know that Samuel became a great prophet and great spiritual leader uh, in the nation of Israel. But in our text of 1 Samuel 3, uh, Samuel is uh, still a boy, uh, perhaps 12 years old, as uh, scholars estimate. And so we begin reading in our text, uh, chapter 3, and beginning at verse 1, that the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. Uh, that is that the Samuel was uh, serving, uh, doing his bit according to what he could do uh, at the age of 12 uh, at the tabernacle, that is the place where God's special presence was and where people met uh, to worship God uh, in Shiloh there in the region of Ephraim. And, and he was serving as Eli's assistant and under Eli's direction. And then verse one continues that in the word of the Lord, uh, was rare at that time, rare in those days. And there was no frequent vision. Uh, that is that uh, it was rare that God would, uh, in those days, uh, speak to anyone directly or uh, appear to anyone in a vision or a dream. In fact, if you uh, read uh, the opening uh, chapters of 1 Samuel and you get a feel for uh, the uh, failure leadership of Eli and his two sons, Hophni, and Phineas, uh, it, it seems that this uh, time, the, the time in which all of this was happening, uh, was, was rather a dark one, uh, spiritually speaking. Uh, uh, but then uh, the text continues in verses two and three, and it says, "And at that time, Eli, that is the priest, the high priest, uh, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim, so that he could not see, was was lying down, sleeping in his own place." And that the lamp of God in the, in the tabernacle had not yet gone out. And that Samuel, his assistant, his young assistant, Hannah's son, was lying down in the temple of the Lord and the ark of God was there. And so Eli the priest was advanced in years. He'd gotten quite old and had lost his eyesight. Uh, it was nighttime. Both Eli and, and Samuel were, were sleeping in their respective quarters adjacent to uh, the tabernacle, the reference to the menorah or the lamp in, in, within the tabernacle, a burning low and yet not quite going out suggests that uh, a sort of a time reference uh, suggesting that uh, perhaps it was early morning and yet not quite dawn uh, when uh, more olive oil would be put into the menorah, into the, into the lamp uh, to keep it burning because the lamp was supposed to be supposed to burn both day uh, and night. And so at night they would put a lot of oil in to keep it burning until until they woke up the next morning. And then we read beginning in verse four that, that the Lord called to Samuel while they were all sleeping. And, he, and, and, and Samuel uh, uh, heard the voice of the Lord. Uh, and yet he thought it was uh, uh, Eli. And so it says, uh, he went to uh, Eli and, and, and said to him, here I am uh, for you called me. And Eli said, I, I didn't uh, call you, go lie down. And so, he, Samuel went back and he lied down again. And then in verse six, it says, and, and, the, and the Lord again uh, said, uh, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But Eli said, no, I didn't call you my son. <laughs> Go lie down. And then in verse seven, we have uh, the, the, the writer uh, inserts a, an editorial remark. He says, now Samuel did not know the Lord. 
and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. It's a very interesting remark. It, it doesn't it doesn't mean to 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 say that uh, that Samuel uh, didn't know who the Lord was, or that he that he didn't know anything about the Lord. Rather, it just means that the Lord had never come to Samuel and spoken to him in the way that he was now. But then we pick up in verse eight, and it says that the Lord called to Samuel again a third time. Uh, and he arose and he went to Eli and he said, here I am for you called me. And then it says, and Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. And so he said to Samuel, go lie down. And if he calls you again, say, speak Lord, for your servant hears. And so Samuel went and lay down again in his place and the Lord came, in verse 10 it says, and the Lord came and stood, calling at other times, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, speak for your servant hears. And so in this final round of calling, the Lord not only spoke to Samuel, but even came and stood near Samuel's bed, allowing himself to be seen in some way by Samuel. And Samuel's response to the Lord was, speak, Lord, your servant hears. Samuel's response is an expression of humble submission to God, an expression of, of, of personal readiness to hear whatever the Lord had to say and to do whatever the Lord would ask of him. To put it in other words, Samuel was on deck for God. You name it, Lord. Uh, just say the word uh, and you've got it. Uh, I'm your man. You can count on me. That's what Samuel meant when he said, speak, Lord, for your servant here. And so how about you? Are you on deck for God? Perhaps you've got a list of things that uh, God keeps calling you, calling on you about, and yet, you refuse to do them. Oh, you do some of the things he calls you to do, but not those things. In his book, Living by the Book, Howard Hedrick said something poignant. He said, in God's economy, partial obedience is disobedience. In God's economy, partial obedience is disobedience. And so we answer some of God's calls, but not all of them, which in the end only keeps us from growing spiritually. In fact, uh, Leslie Vernick put it this way. She said, some of us are not growing spiritually simply because we aren't willing to put into practice the things that God is calling us to do. And so we say we believe, but we won't obey. It was Donald Miller who wrote in his famous book, The Blue Like Jazz, he wrote, what I believe is not what I say I believe, rather what I believe is what I do. And so what are we going to do with Samuel? Indeed, uh, do you think that we have the story of Samuel in our Bibles uh, for nothing? or that you are hearing a talk about Samuel this morning for nothing, that God isn't calling all of us to, to do something with Samuel, indeed to do as Samuel did. It was Jesus who famously said that many are called, but few are chosen. And I guarantee that God is calling us this morning in fact, I guarantee further that if you and I are amongst the chosen, you and I will answer the call. And you and I will say to the Lord, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And then whatever the Lord says, and perhaps he's been saying it to you and me for a long time, maybe saying, calling us to the same things that we keep on setting aside. That whatever the Lord says, you and I will do it because you and I are on deck for God. Amen. Speak, Lord, 
your servant is listening. Let us pray. In fact, everything that we read in the scriptures not only tells us the way things are, not only reveals to us your truth, but has a true application. I think of what uh, one person said that a good example is not just for us to be inspired, but for us to imitate. And so we might think, well, Samuel was just 12 years old and he was so uh, spiritually mature and, and be impressed by that. But the story of Samuel is in the scripture, Lord, that we might not just be inspired or be impressed by it, but say, that's the thing I want to do. I want to be on deck for you, Lord. I want to be on deck, available and ready to serve whatever you say and whatever it is that you want me to do. And so, Lord, I pray that uh, we might uh, be impacted uh, and impacted to, to the extent that this becomes our attitude. It's not just the attitude of Samuel, but our own attitude. Whenever we hear your word, whenever you prompt us by your spirit and you seek to lead us in a way that leads to everlasting life, on that narrow road that leads to life, that narrow road that few people find, uh, that when you prompt us, Lord, we say yes, rather than something else. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.